Program complete. Enter when ready. This is uh, spec problem three from Blackboard. Molecular formula C4H8O2. We're going to calculate the degree of unsaturation, which will tell us the number of pi bonds plus rings, by taking 1 plus the number of carbons minus 1 half the number of hydrogens and halogens, which in this case is 8, and that equals 1. The uh, formula for this is right here, and so we have one pi bond, or we have one ring. Now we'll take a look at the infrared spectra, and we see two significant absorptions. One of them over here is just to the right of 3,000. That indicates sp3 hybridized carbons bonded to hydrogen, and that's what we would expect if we have a strong absorption here at 1740 uh, that is a carbonyl, a C double bond O and that looks like this. Now when you have an absorption around 1740, 1735 uh, that typically is an ester and the structure for an ester uh, looks something like this. So we suspect that we may have an ester uh, and that's consistent with one degree of unsaturation, specifically the pi bond that we see right there. Uh, for those that care, right over here at 1243, uh, you don't need to know that one. That's a carbon-oxygen single bond stretch. Let's take a look at the proton NMR now. And what we're going to see in the proton NMR is we're going to have three signals and here they are and what we have is we have a classic signature of an ethyl group and that's going to be a triplet of what looks like three hydrogens and a quartet that looks like two and a singlet which will be three hydrogens we can be sure that these areas are three to three to two because we only have eight hydrogens. We know this is an ethyl group, therefore this must be three, this must be three, that's six. Total of eight hydrogens, this must be two. Um, lots of other ways to figure that out. It's kind of a no-brainer. So what we want to do is we want to put together an ester, and right over here is the ester linkage. So we could put a methyl group attached here, and we could put an ethyl group attached here, and uh, that's one possibility. The problem is that's not the only possibility. Another possibility is to connect the ester up this way. And you'll see that structurally the ethyl group is present in both. The isolated methyl that has no adjacent hydrogens that could cause splitting. So those are present in both molecules and the question is how can we tell the difference between these two structures? Well, the answer is chemical shift. And on a table you should be given during the test, you will see chemical shifts of various protons. And what we see here is, is that a proton that's on a carbon bonded directly to a carbonyl comes in around 2.1. So here's a proton on a carbon bonded directly to a carbonyl, so we'd expect the orange environment to come in at 2.1. Bingo! We'd also, by looking over here at this hydrogen that's bonded to a carbon, directly bonded to an oxygen, that should come in at 3.3, or more downfield if this carbon here is a carbonyl, which it is. So what we have here is a hydrogen bonded to a carbon, bonded to an O, should be 3.3, and this carbon here, if that's a carbonyl, it should be further downfield. And there's the green environment. That's perfectly consistent with the structure below here. But if you look at this structure here, I'll let you do that. You can always pause the video and do that. You'll see that these chemical shifts here are not consistent with the upper compound. 
So what we'll do here is we will get rid of this compound right over here and we'll take a look now at the carbon-13 NMR to see if it matches up with what we think we have. Now the chemical shift in carbon-13 and the chemical shift in proton NMR are similar. So here is the carbon-13 NMR and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in the chemical shifts that we found from the proton NMR. And what we see here is we see that this signal right over here which is a CH2 because it points down so that's a CH2 is the most downfield just like it was in the proton NMR and we also see that these two signals here which are indicated as CH3's or CH's but we know that those are CH3's those are going to be more upfield which is also consistent with the proton NMR so it's all good furthermore we do see an absorption right over here around 200 and that is indicative of our carbonyl you'll note that we don't see anything above here because what shows up above here in the carbon-13 where you have splitting where the carbons are coupled to the protons bonded to them you only see the CH2, the CH3, and the CH so this kind of disappears up here everything's good, that's the solvent, we don't care about it so we're very happy that we have achieved success and that's going to be a wrap